The first step in looking at size is to define direct torrenting. Direct torrenting is the most widely used torrenting method in engineering and manufacturing. It involves applying a torrent directly to a feature. The shaft on the right has a nominal width of diameter 10.25 and a torrent of plus or minus 0.25. A direct torrents is well suited to define the size dimensions of a feature of size. There are two types of direct torrenting. Limit dimensioning defines the upper and lower limits of a feature, and plus or minus torrenting defines the nominal value and the amount of torrents it can vary. This can either be equally distributed in both the positive and negative directions, as the shaft on the right, or it can be unequally distributed with more torrents in either the positive or negative direction, as shown in the hole on the right. The most common method used is the equally distributed torrents, which I have highlighted. Next is to explain what is and is not a feature of size. We will first start with regular features of size. There are also irregular features of size, which we will explain later, but for now, when we refer to feature of size, we are referring to regular features of size, as they are far more common. To start, we will look at three, three objects, a step shaft, a rectangular cutout and a step down in a block. Each of these has a nominal value of 10 with a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5. We have to determine which of these feet are features of size. To do this, there are some defined requirements for a feature of size. Firstly, it must have a directly tolerance dimension. This is the size aspect of a feature of size. It must contain opposed points and it must have an axis or a plane which can be repeatedly derived. There is a rule of thumb that can be used to help determine if an item is a feature of size or not. It is called the caliper rule. First, we'll look at a vernier caliper, which contains jaws for measuring internal features, jaws for measuring external features, and a rod for measuring or probing depths. The caliper rule states that if the feature is measured with the jaws, it is a feature of size. If it is measured with the rod, it is not a feature of size. This is because the jaw measures using opposing points where the rod does not. Let's try the caliper rule on the three features we looked at earlier, starting with the step shaft. The end of the step shaft is an external feature and to measure it with a vernier caliper, we would use the jaws for measuring external features. The caliper rule says that this is a feature of size. Let's check the result by bringing in our requirements for a feature of size feature must be directly toleranced, it must have opposing points, and it must have an axis or a plane that can be repeatedly derived. Now let's apply the caliper rule to the cutout in the block. The cutout is an internal feature, and to measure with the vernier caliper, we would use the jaws for measuring an internal feature. So the caliper rule says that this is a feature of size. Again, let's check this result by bringing in our requirements for a feature of size. The feature must be directly tolerant. It must have opposing points. And it must have an axis or plane which can be repeatedly derived. Last, let's check the step down in the block. The feature is a step down of two surfaces, and to measure it with a vernier caliper, we would use the rod to measure the depth. So the caliper rule says that this is not a feature of size. Again, let's double check with our requirements for a feature of size. The feature must be directly toleranced, and it must have an axis or a plane that can be repeatedly derived. Next, it must have opposing points, which this feature does not. To understand why the cutout does not have opposing points, Let's bring back in the step shaft and rectangular hole from earlier. If on both of these features we drew a line following the measurement, it would touch the feature at each end of the line. For the cutout, however, if we start the line, it does not touch the part at the end of the measurement. 